Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our third masterclass as part of Cellissimo. My name is Finian Collins, and I'm the Artistic Director of Music for Galway and Cellissimo. And I want to give a particular welcome to Naomi Beryl, who's here this morning to work with our eight wonderful young students. Naomi gave a wonderful recital last night, live from the McLally Theatre, uh, for music. It was so beautiful. And she also performed as part of our opening concert with the world premiere of Bill Whelan's Fragments. So she's playing a very significant role in our festival, and we're delighted to have her. And she's going to spend the next two hours working with our students. So Naomi, thank you for being here, and a warm welcome to our class. Thank you. Perfect. But so the first student we have for today is going to be Michael. Yeah. Hi, Michael. Hi, how are things? Nice to meet you virtually. Lovely to meet you too. <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll just uh, give a few general uh, overall words of how, how this masterclass is going to work. Um, okay. So um there was a little questionnaire which i sent out to all of you eight cellists um i wanted to get you know get to know you musically and so i asked your five five favorite pieces or five pieces you liked which were not in the classical repertoire so this was really helpful now i have a kind of a uh, an image of maybe what you listen to when uh, when you need a, a break from from the classical world or, or you want to just hear something different so i've chosen um one piece from each of your choices and we're going to work on a very simple idea for maybe a possible arrangement for a duo or um, solo or improvise. I just anyway. So um, your choice, the what I chose from your list was Moon River. Okay. Yeah, and uh, all the most of the arrangements that we will work on today are in. Um, I've put them into D major just for so we kind of get used to all the chord shapes in D and um, but obviously then in your own free time, feel free to move it into any key you like or any yeah. octave or whatever. Okay, so um, I'll just, you have your score there, do you, yeah? Yeah, I do. Great, okay, so I'll just um, hold it up there. So anyone else would like to have a little see. Um, are you used to reading the chorus, chord uh, symbols in, the, in this way? Have you? Um, I'll be honest, no, I, I'm not really. So this is a bit of a new experience, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, well, I, I thought I'd come from a very um, cellistic idiom, idiom to start off with. So I was thinking of the um, Bach prelude the, from the first suite. So we have straight away a broken chord of G major, no? Okay, so can you just, we'll maybe work with pizzicato, if that's okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so could you just play that for me? Great, okay. So here we have our G, our, um, G major chord, the, with the G, the fifth, and then the third up here, okay? Yep. So this is the easiest um, position on the cello for all our chords. So when we're in D major, we have our D chord. Can you do that for me? So our three most important major chords in, when we accompany a song in, in D are D, G, and A. So we have D, G, A, okay? Yeah. And then the two minors are two and six. So we have E minor and B minor. Okay. So if you just always um, put your first finger on the key note of the chord, yeah? Yeah. You've got those two, okay. Um, and obviously the difference between the major and the minor chords is our, uh, for, for the minor chords, we always use the second finger and for major always the third, yeah? Okay, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so can you just play me the three major chords that are most important in D major and the two minor? <laughs> and the two minor, so then we have E minor and B minor. Yeah. And obviously, if you're more comfortable doing that in first position, that's fine too. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to take the first line of the Moon River. Um, 
So we and uh, accompany it in a in a in a Bach chordal style as is. Okay, and then you can give it a go. So um so, get that far with the chords we've done so far okay, okay. obviously you don't don't feel you have to sing <laughs> but um just try and do the the chord sequence for those first one two three four five six bars okay, um. okay great and um it's nice to use the little passing note that Bach uses in the suite also is which is the it's actually the third to the second um so we can also use that's just um like a little ornament going from the third of the chord to the second so you can do that if you want or you don't have to. um and these chords can also be played um as whole chords or they can be strummed as a guitar so this yeah. is all your you can you can choose um and um, now that we all have all sorts of uh, gadgets and uh, means to record ourselves, it's nice maybe if if you if you would like to or or you need to take um, a, you know experiment with maybe a, a second cello or you know you can play the melody and then add the accompaniment um, or or vice versa. Yeah. yeah? Um, so and then there's uh, we come along to two more unusual chords. the C sharp minor seven flat five so a jazz musician will, will um see that and, and play it no bother for a cellist maybe we're not so used to finding that chord um yeah. but a very it, it's a common chord in, in in jazz songs and there's a very easy position so basically c sharp minor seven flat five the c sharp with your second finger yeah on the on the g string yeah then we have the flattened fifth of the chord so you play g with your first finger and then we have the third of this minor chord, which we get up here, which is E. So um, one, two, three, without any extensions should, oh no, sorry. Yeah, no, two, one, three. Yeah, and this, is, this can be moved anywhere if you'd like to do it an octave lower. It'll work here also, using the open G. All right. And then that is followed by uh, a chord which is not usually in D major, um, F sharp major, F sharp major seven. So I'll just show you a, a nice way to add a seven to the to, to any chord. Um, we we'll do it on the a D a D chord first, okay? So our normal D was, yeah. So if I want to add the seventh, it's the C. I can do like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, so your D here up in for the fourth position. Yeah. Okay. So, um, using this position, can you find an F sharp major seven chord for me on the cello? Uh, the same position? Yeah. So th this is your D, and then when you add the seventh, you have the D, then you have the seventh, and then the third. Okay, so can you give me an F sharp seven? With the same shape. So I need my F sharp with the first finger, and then the seventh. So, give me your F sharp. No, it's okay. So F sharp with the first finger. Yeah. Then second finger, or sorry, um, fourth finger. Okay, so what the, what the notes are, are um, I'll do my F sharp normal major chord, F sharp, C sharp, and um, what's this? Yes, A sharp. So it's 
one no, one three. Up a tiny bit. I'm struggling to see the fingering a bit. Okay. I'll see that picture so, yeah. Okay. Sorry, go ahead. No problem. Uh, okay, so um, can you play me a F major chord as as a simple F major without the seventh? Yeah, okay. So to add the seventh, we just use the fourth finger to give us the seventh note of F major. And... Exactly, exactly. So whenever, whenever you come across a chord which has a seventh, you can use this hand shape, okay? Um, for example, A. If I want to do A7, I just do one, four, three. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's probably more, it's more usual for guitarists to think in, in fingering shapes, you know, but in, in a way it's good for, for us cellists also to get to know the cello um, and get to know these chord shapes as, um, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a chord shape, as no, fin finger numbers. And then it's very easy to transpose uh, our, 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 the idea we worked out or the chord scheme we worked out. Yeah, yeah? Okay. yeah I never really thought like that, but I probably should. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I like, yeah, I think it's just I've come automatically to think like this because I, um, I, I've experimented, try, tried to work out so many songs on the cello. So uh, for me, these uh, these chord shapes are automatic, but I think it will be, yeah, it, it will be a nice maybe project after this class if you maybe take another song from your list and try and work out yourself the, the chord scheme and um, yeah. Why yeah, not? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and sometimes the chord schemes can be just as complex or as as um as a chord scheme from a, a Bach movement, or you know. Yeah. Um, it's also it's also interesting. I don't know if 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 you've ever done it when studying a Bach movement to imagine a bass line or chords that would maybe go along with the melody. Yeah. Yeah. Have you have you ever done that? Um, I've done sometimes when I'm just analyzing it initially, but yeah. other than that, I'm just more direction based. Yeah. Where okay. Okay. Yeah. Of course, for us, the when we're playing um, a standard repertoire cello cello piece, the uh, the main line is the most important. But um, it's also it's also nice to uh, to think harmonically also. Yeah. When we yeah. when we can. Yeah. Especially yeah. maybe in the slower movements or or things like that. Um, so I don't know how the sound would be, but maybe if we manage to get another few bars together, we can uh, try this as a duo. Uh, you can accompany me and I can accompany you <laughs> with the chords. <laughs> Who knows? Um, so I think you, you want to try the first line? Okay. Yeah. Right, so the, the most difficult chord is the C sharp minor flat and fifth. So just, just a little reminder for that shape. You put your second finger on the C sharp and then first finger on the G and third on the E. Two, one, three. Yeah, that's two, one, three. Yeah, yeah, sorry. That's my bad. <laughs> it's absolutely okay. <laughs> okay. So yeah. In your own time, have a go at that for the, the first line with the chords. Playing them as you want, if you want to just do the simple notes or a strum or as, as you Okay. Um... Yeah, that was right. All right, sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> now that's grand, and then so after then, then you have your F sharp. Yeah, yeah. After our C sharp minor seven, um, it goes to the F sharp. So there, for example. I already have a my second finger on the C sharp, so if you want, you can just stay in the same position and play your F sharp chord two two four. Oh yeah, okay. Mhm. Mm yeah. And obviously, in bar two, for example, the B minor that can be done in first position as well. Just, just 
depending where you're comfortable. I think I've just got used to playing a lot of the chords in first position, but yeah. yeah. Um, and once you have those chord shapes, you can um, play pizzicato or you can do a... Okay. Or you can just take two uh, strings and do a double stop. So, for example, I can just take the first two notes of every chord and play a constant uh, a double stop chord. to um, bring out the third as well because the fifth can be a bit um, maybe Metallica sounded like or something so um, yeah um, let's just play that first phrase sure. you want we will just do the first line um, and you can accompany I'll, I'll play the melody and, and you can accompany as you as you like do you want to take a minute to decide or do you just want to do the pizzicato I, I can just do the pizzicato if you want to go ahead Perfect, okay. So we'll just do uh, uh, until the F sharp, okay? Yep. And then, then, we'll, then we'll swap, we'll redo that line again, you play the melody and I'll accompany you. Okay? okay. Oh. Yeah, maybe this isn't gonna be synchronized, is it? I was just thinking that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's not going to work. Anyway, so, well, you can try this out later with your um, recording uh, opportunities on your phone okay. or computer. Um, yeah. And obviously, all these ideas, if, if you have um, the possibility of a concert with a cello trio, or all these chordal ideas can be broken up into three lines, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, for example, if you, if, if you wanted to arrange this piece for um, a trio, the important thing to, to take care would be the, whatever note you have in the melody, uh, for example, the very first chord, um, the melody has the A, so my other two cellos would play the other two notes, the D and the F sharp. Yeah. And when you have the more complex chords, like for example, flat and fifth, seven, it's, it's nice if you manage to hear, to, to let, bring out the, the more unusual no notes in the chord. So maybe if there's um, only three lines, uh, two lines accompanying and one, one melody, it would be nice if you always include the seventh in the chord. Yeah, yeah. Example, or the flat and fifth or something like this. Yeah. So, but, and uh, I just wanted to tell you before we move on to the next song, I love your choice of song. And if, if one day you, you, you decide to perform this as a, as a little uh, arrangement that you continue to work on, um, it's a very nice to, to maybe for, I don't know, uh, playing a piece which is not standard cl classical repertoire, maybe fits into a cellist program as a special encore piece that people would remember you by, yeah? yeah. So it's nice. It's also the, the encore piece is a moment where we maybe have uh, the possibility to say a few words to the audience. So your choice of song was Song of the Year in 1962. <laughs> it's a it, it was an interesting time. In, um, um, rock and roll was replacing jazz as a main uh, kind of a e e listening listening uh, style of music. And the man who wrote the lyrics, Johnny Mercer, his career was um, on the way down because everyone was listening to rock and roll instead of jazz standards. Okay. Uh, but this song helped his career to to get back on the road. And because of that, there's an area near where he's from in Georgia and there is a, a bay, a little inlet, and they've called it Moon River after the success of this song. And uh, yeah, he, he was from there. So it's, it's always nice to do a little bit of background research and, and see where these um, 
where these sounds come from. So yeah, no, definitely. I didn't know that before. I... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me neither. Yeah, and of course, yeah, the the version you suggested to me, Jacob Collier. Um, I, I know it really well, and yeah, it's beautiful, amazing. No. Yeah, the, the harmonies are just ridiculous. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and it's interesting now. Uh, when I had to perform the, or when, when I had the joy of performing Bill Whelan's uh, premiere his piece the other evening, one of the very first times we, we met up um, to discuss music in general and, and his piece, we, we spoke about different artists we admired and that particular um, piece and Jacob Collier was one of the first um, musicians he mentioned to me. So it's, it's nice to know that um, musicians, composers uh, from, from all uh, different uh, walks of life and genres have a, have a wide interest in different styles so yeah, yeah. I, I, I was uh, pleased to hear to, to see this piece in your list so. yeah no definitely he's a, he's a genius yeah 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 like um uh, you can you can you feel free to work out all his chords also you know with these techniques <laughs> that would take a while but i, I give it a chance <laughs> yeah 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 um so yeah so anyway i think we'll move on to the next song and, and the next student now but um i hope this has been a little uh uh, seed for creation and uh, and uh, and uh, new ideas and um, yeah, exactly. a different yeah. approach to even technical work on the cello. You know, yeah. all all these chord shapes can be used then when you need to work on a, a bowing stroke for a difficult classical piece. All, all this material can be useful. You can make up your own exercises using these chord shapes and then you know working on it. Definitely, it was very beneficial. Thanks a million for this. Okay, you're welcome, Michael. Okay, best of luck. And so now we'll move on to Catherine. Hi. Hi, Catherine. How are you? I'm good. Nice to meet you. You too. Are you are you uh, zooming from Ireland or abroad or where? Yeah, I'm in, I'm in Mullingar. You're in Mullingar. Okay, great. Yeah. No. <laughs> We're not too far apart. Right, not too far apart. I'm I'm from County Gold, uh, zooming in from County Gold. So uh, you've you've chosen a, a, a nice jazzy jazzy uh, song, or I've chosen from your list of uh, favorite pieces, uh, in the mood. Yeah, 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 yeah. So tell me, why do you like this piece? I don't know. I I just I mean, it's very um it's very jazzy and it's very um it's kind of just easy to listen to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the rhythm, the rhythm is quite. Uh, it gives us an energy in a way, no? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so, you have your simple score for in the mood there, do you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, looking at it, it it could be a study on arpeggios or something, couldn't it? The melody. Yeah. Yeah. We'll just show it here. Give a second. So. Yeah. Uh, so yeah i just um the, the melody of of your of this the song that you've you've uh, mentioned that you like it's almost the main all, all made up of the main uh, chords that we find in um in the key of d i've, I've moved into the key of d just so we can uh, work on it easily um so do you want to have a go at playing the melody for me sure talking yeah. or or both uh, um, even with the bow, with the bow, yeah. <laughs> I love that you've automatically gone for the the dotted tempo yeah so yeah. we often find this in a in a jazz um in a jazz piece it's written as if it's da, 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 but we automatically give it that um jazz swing and um when when working on a jazz melody and also other other melodies um a jazz bass player once told me that when they study their their jazz pieces they always put their metronome on the offbeat and apart from keeping the challenging our ability to stay in time, it also gives us the idea that we have a, a drummer behind us or something. So, for example, when when you're working on a on a jazz piece like this, 
It can just help us to, to feel the rhythm, yeah? yeah? So maybe when when working on this, uh, when you don't have the possibilities to have a jazz drummer behind you, or <laughs> you can use your metronome in the meanwhile. Um, so the chords, we have D, G. Um, maybe we'll even just imagine we're a double bass for the beginning, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so the double bass just uh, keeps keeps going. The even even just the fifth or even the broken chords. So, for example, the first four bars I could accompany this um, with a D, just simple D arpeggio, and I change to G, back to D, A. So do you want to um, make up your own uh, bass line for the first uh, one, two, three, four, eight bars? And uh, feel free to play even just D all the time or alternating from the, fir from the first to the fifth of each chord or doing a little ar arpeggio. Um. Super. Um, you've already done something nice and added the seventh in. Okay. Did you? We did you do that? Uh, were you aware of that, or was it by ear? Or um, well, I I kind of knew it would be in the background in the piece. Great. Great. Okay. Okay. So one thing to be very careful about when we use the seventh. Um, that's quite a typical bass line, yeah. The seventh always is the flattened seventh. So for example, when we go to the G, it's gonna be F natural. Okay. And then our, our A7, G natural, yeah. And then the other unusual chord, which is maybe not necessarily in D, is the B flat. Yeah, that's fine. I, and the A seven. Uh, okay. Try let's let's try that again and just make sure that if you're using any sevenths that they're always the flattened sevenths, so not the note that would be in scale. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. And obviously these notes can be in any order. The order you've played them in is quite often how we hear them, no? In ascending order, the arpeggio with the fifth, but I can... You can also mess around and um, change octaves and... Um, um, yeah, so... And just, what did I want to say about this piece as well? Yeah. Um, that this piece, as you were adding in your seventh naturally by ear, even the melody of this song, if I hadn't written it up here, I think you would have been able to um, to work it out. It's, it's not very complex. So it's, it's great to, to give ourselves a challenge, maybe at the end of our practice, just to take a piece and say, OK, I'm going to work out that melody today, you know, by ear. Um, and I remember um, some years ago studying on a, on a jazz music course um, in Banff and there was a jazz violinist and he was uh, telling us some of his techniques of experimenting with, with jazz music but also using classical repertoire and getting to know his instrument and changing keys. So he was taking the cadenzas from all um, the violin concertos that he had studied and learning to play them in every key, so in all 12 keys. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I really admired him for that because it takes maybe a, yeah, it takes, it takes a, a bit of time. But after we've done that, um, you know, we, we get to know our instrument and the keys and the chord shapes um, very well. So for example, um, 
this with the with the with the three chord four four chords that we've come across if if you were uh, playing this with some other musicians and uh, someone wanted to scat along with the melody and they say that key just doesn't work for me do you mind if we if we bring it up uh, you know bring it up or bring it down it should be easy enough to do that once you get the idea of the chords in your head yeah 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 okay so do you think you could just try um just as a little experiment they just the first two chords and i say okay d is too high could we try it in b flat okay <laughs> and no stress and for example if if uh, uh, if you're in a situation like this and you're thinking, oh, I can't think which is the seventh of B flat, you know, just stick to the, the notes that you're sure will, will work, the notes of the chord that you have clear in your in your head. So first four bars of In the Mood in B flat major. Um. No, no, don't worry, don't worry. Okay, so your your seventh, just if, if you want to go for the seventh, so just maybe think very um quickly in your head. What's the seventh? A flat. Yeah. Yeah, so we're not yeah, okay. So we're not gonna really find it very easily. Um what you could do, you could put yourself straight away in um second position, okay? So I, yeah, so I have the first finger on my B flat, and then I have my fourth finger ready yeah and then and then when i go to chord four which will be e flat not g i also have my seventh ready there so yeah. so do we, we'll just try those two chords slowly so we have b flat yeah and then we have the e flat yeah okay so the the um, that the good point of getting to know uh, the different keys is that we find a hand shape that works best for that tonality. And that's kind of standard. That's just probably like a guitarist would work on the guitar. Like for example, for any any tune I'm accompanying in E flat, I would always use those those hand shapes. Um, yeah. So yeah, but yeah, well, well done, well done. Um, and then for example, if you're playing with a little group this uh, in the mood, we we'll, we'll go back to D now in our head. Um, and the trumpet player beside you says, would you like to take a solo? What would you say? <laughs> you would <Sorry>. say, okay. <laughs> um, and in, in, in that case, uh, if you have never had a, a jazz lesson with, um, regarding, or maybe you have, have you ever had any jazz lessons? No. Oh. Okay, okay. Well, the main thing uh, to remember is that, um, your solo can be very simple. You don't have to play, you don't have to change note so often. Um, rhythm is very important. And often um, the it's good not to maybe play your solo little, uh, little section on the cello using the tonic notes of the chords. So for example, if, if um, I've been asked to do a solo over this, it's not gonna be so exciting if I stick to my D. No, so it's better to use the the more unusual notes in what you played in your bass line, the seventh. I could even do a very simple rhythmical motif just using this seventh and one chord or a note nearby, for example. Um, Um, so just try to move, trying to move away when we, when we're asked, when we're trying to create the a solo line or something contrasting over the chords to try and stay, steer it slightly away from the main uh, root of each note, of each chord. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so do you have any questions or? Um, last night, this kind of off topic, but you mentioned um, that one of some of the harmony at the start of one of your pieces was based on a box suit. I couldn't figure out what that was. was ah. it a major saraband. That was my guess, but I wasn't sure. The D major saraband. Is that what you said? Yeah. Yes. So dun da 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 da. Okay. 
was it? Maybe it wasn't the Saraband. I haven't got my back here on hand. Anyway, the slower movement of the sixth suite. Yeah, it slips my mind. Um, I'm not going to play all the chords because I don't know them right now really well. Um, but yeah, this is a, a movement I find extremely beautiful, but extremely difficult. So I, I've never played it in public. But uh, the, that, that, so that just comes from the very, towards the end, the last few bars, the harmony, yeah. So it's... Yeah, <laughs> I, I couldn't recognize it. I couldn't figure out what it was. So I was just wondering. Yeah, yeah, anyway, that, that's what it was, yeah, yeah. And so, what was it you who mentioned in your song list as well boots of Spanish leather? Is that you? No, that wasn't me. No, that was someone else. Okay, okay, okay. Well, um, we'll, we'll come to that anyway, but uh, wait later. Um, but yeah, um, thank you very much for uh, for listening in yesterday and for participating today. And um, yeah, keep um, keep on experimenting with the with the with these chords and and um, different melodies. I think it's it's it's, it's very important to yeah keep open to all styles yeah thank you you're welcome so we should have um robert now oh, is that right Hello. Hello, Robert. How are you? How are you doing? Not too bad. How are you keeping? I'm good. So where are you um, zooming in from this morning? Uh, the Gorgeous School of Music. Oh, great. Okay, lovely. Um, so we have a, a nice uh, traditional melody here that, from your choice of uh, songs that you like. Uh, just tell me, why, why do you like this song before we start? Um, I just it kind of, I've always listened to it since I was younger. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure where I first heard it. I think it might have been maybe one of my family singing or something, but uh, yeah, I've always really liked it. So uh -huh. always, yeah, it's just why I always come back to it. It's kind of haunting, isn't it? The, the melody, yeah. Yeah, it is, yeah. Um, I, I, I like especially Sinead O'Connor's version. It's amazing, yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and ha have you ever played it? Uh, yeah, I think it was like back, back in school because I, I used to play, well, not really anymore, but I used to play a bit of piano. Um, I think I, I was playing for like somebody's practical or junior or practical or something. And I think I was playing this with them. They were singing. So, uh -huh. Oh, lovely. Okay. Like, uh -huh. you know. And so did you play a bass line or did you play the melody or do you remember? Uh, it was just chords and the piano. Oh, great. Oh, you were accompanying on the piano. I get you. Great. Okay. So maybe, maybe you use more. Uh, you uh, exotic chords that I, uh, I I I took took a fairly easy chord sequence, but probably as as you know, uh, if you're a pianist, you know, these Irish men can be a in many ways. And we I'm, have, uh, I'm not a, I'm not a pianist. I can play a small, but I'm not a pianist. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, anyway, as uh, yeah, as as we know uh, regarding these Irish melodies, you know, we we there's a there's a there's a choice and a freedom. It's not like a Beethoven sonata where if you play yeah, yeah. sharp instead of a um, you know, it, we have that freedom for harmonic uh, accompaniment. So that uh, I suppose it can be seen as a, a as a kind of a breath of fresh air. Also, no, we can we we have a yeah. little liberty. And, yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, if you were accompanying this with with what I've given you, what what would you what would your first instinct be? Um, well, I probably pluck first. First of all, like, uh -huh. like, how would I play it? Is it like, would I pluck or would I use Yeah, or just considering you know different versions and you know the song, um, I could say, I've given you some chords, but this could also start off without using the chords, with just start with uh, um, yeah, something just, else. Yeah, just even even the first, I would, like, if you're looking at verses, like, you could start maybe the first verse on company or something, just the melody. Yeah. Exactly. 
you could bring in like it's kind of and then maybe like, like you were saying before like, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly exactly or even a drone which is often used in these um melodies which have a a very a very simple line um can can be very effective you know you could just just do your B minor fifth, or you could experiment and see what harmonics you can get, which would work. What would it be? For example, if you if you play your B with the second finger and then press very lightly on the G on the D string, you can get a D harmonic, which is the third note of the B minor chord. Like that. Yeah. And sometimes with, the, with these harmonics, uh, I find anyway, when, we're, when, when you use them, um, sometimes they're not perfectly in tune with the chord. So sometimes I, I detune my cello very slightly to make sure if, if I'm starting a piece, for example, like this with this harmonic, I would make sure that the harmonic is, is really well in, in tune with them, yeah. where, where I need it for. And that's not always the case. But yeah, um, like the whole, the whole beginning could just be. And you could just keep that keep that going, um, while while uh, your cellist friend or violinist friend plays the melody. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. We had any more chords? Like I was, I think, uh, I think what I did before after the the A in the second bar it was like then yeah, like the back to me. That's what I did before. Lovely. So, you, so you would do. Um, da, 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 F sharp minor. F sharp minor. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And to fill out the four four, if you were if you were doing if you wanted to bow it, and even make, maybe make even um a whole variation of the accompaniment, so the accompaniment could work as um as um so the accompaniment could stand alone. You could even um yeah so do you do you want to try get, just give me a little sample sample accompaniment like that like as in no 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 as 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 you like if if you yeah if if you want to try maybe pick, Pizzicato or with the boar, just give me a little. Uh... I'll, I'll try pizzicato first anyway. Sure. Just... Yeah. Absolutely fine. Um, maybe just for some variety, you could add in some passing notes. So when you have the posi hand position of the chord, for example, the B minor, just see within staying with that position, um, what what notes you can add without moving your hand. So for example, just so I'm not always getting. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 alternating slightly when you when you go up to the higher notes yeah you want to try yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry Okay. 
Yeah, great. So obviously straight away to my ear, this is slightly more interesting because I'm not only hearing the, the chord itself. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So whenever, whenever we can, um, it's good to, good to enrich just you, like like this, you know. And obviously, if maybe if 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 we're doing a bowing version and we don't need to keep the the stay, sustain chord, you can also have more options. You know, you can make it more you, you can make it more um more rich in that way. Um, and if you were um playing this especially out of Ireland, I think it's very, it's very nice to add a little historical note or say, you, do you know when it was written or what it was written for? I don't actually, I'm not sure. No, so this was written um, at the time of the Easter Rising, 1916. Oh so, yeah, sorry, yeah. Um, yeah, very, yeah, quite, quite, a, quite a political Irish choice you chose. <laughs> but um, <laughs> you know, all, 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 the, all these little facts, um, just as for us uh, knowing some things about the the Brahms sextets or you know historical information about the famous pieces in the classical repertoire, if um, if you found yourself performing uh, this Irish piece, it it's nice to to pass on this information and then the whole the melody takes on a whole other um, there's a whole other aspect which is very interesting, um, yeah. So. Anyway, I think uh, because because this is such because the the chords here are not so difficult, I don't think we need to dwell too much on it. So I'll maybe move on to the next the next um, song. But uh, thank you very much for your choice, and uh, yeah, nice to know nice to know that you have uh, have an interest in these wor working in this way and also suggesting other chords and everything. So yeah, thank you thank you very much, Robert. Thank you. See you later. Okay, bye. Now, Isaac, you can um, turn on your video and your mic. Hi, Naomi. Hi, Isaac. How are you getting on? I'm good. I can just see you very small, so hopefully they'll, you'll appear on the big screen in a minute. I should. We'll find out. Yeah. Hey, there you are. Yes. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I guess you're, you're in Limerick at the moment, or are you, are you in America? Uh, no, I'm in Limerick at the moment, so. You're in Limerick, great. Okay, okay, okay. And how long have you been here in Ireland? Uh, since September, actually. Since September. Okay, so you've had a, um, a particular experience so far of living in Ireland, and hopefully you'll be able to um, have a, a, another experience in a few months when things get better. I'm going to be a pretzel for that. I'm really excited for yeah. what happens. Great, great, great. Okay, so you're... you're, you're um, yeah, some of your musical choices, there were some groups that I didn't know there at all. So I was very interested to kind of uh, listen to all, all, sorts of, all sorts of music from your, your, your um, chosen list. But what I, I thought we would go for was the uh, Beatles. Oh, great. Yeah, that's fantastic. Your Beatles choice. Uh, so while my guitar gently weeps. Um, so and tell me what, what you like about this song or what, what uh, yeah. Oh gosh, I think this song stuck with me I because I didn't really know the Beatles as well until actually George Harrison passed away. So there was that big concert at Royal Albert Hall back in, what, 2003? Um, yeah. Is his, his part of his quote-unquote memorial service, which was like Eric Clapton, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, um, you know, uh, Ringo and Paul, um, even Tom Hanks, Eric Idle, LSO. It was like, it was a massive thing. And I remember wow. this arrangement that they did. It was like with five drummers and five guitarists. It was so over the top and it really sparked my interest in this. And of course, this is on the same album, I think, as Norwegian Wood. Mm -hmm. um, it's like George Harrison's specific album. Um, and for me, it's like any songs by George Harrison I kind of clung to because I really didn't know the Beatles as well until actually George Harrison's passing, unfortunately. Right. But uh, no, it... it um, I don't know. It's had a. It sticks with me out of all of them more than anyone else, which is really interesting. Yeah, and I think the title alone is very. You know, it it shows how music in general and uh, the ability to have an instrument to express your emotions. It, you know, the the title alone gives us this message. You know. Yeah. 
yeah. And uh, and so have you ever tried to play any of George Harrison's songs on the cello? No, no. You know, I wish. I wish. I remember my my father when I was younger got me a fake book when I was still playing piano and I I couldn't read chord really? structures well. Um, and of course, so looking uh -huh. at this now as somebody who's gone through theory, it's a little bit easier. I've been working through this just a little bit as we've been uh, going on. And um, I appreciate the way that you wrote it out. It actually works a lot easier than I thought it would be. Yeah, uh, the, the, like obviously the chords can be interpreted in slightly different ways. So this is probably just um, an easy way to start off with. And then there is interpretations where the chords might be slightly different or um, yeah. But I just thought uh, we can go with this chord sequence for today, which works and is, is, is fairly uh, faithful to the original chords. So, um, yeah, if, if you were going to, if someone says, can you, can you play that song that you really like? How would you, would you try to play the melody and the chords at the same, would you try and do both or what would you do? Um, I was actually wondering about that because I love your input. I mean, it's a little, obviously without any kind of chords, it'd be a little sparse, you know, if it's just versus maybe and then this would be a nasty one. You know, something like that might help, but I'm wondering a, a kind of a way around that. Yeah, I think I think uh, it's it's definitely a melody where we could try ex and get the melody and the chords at the same time, or at least uh, the melody and one important chord and note. Like maybe it wouldn't necessarily have to be the whole chord itself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Or what we could also do when you, whenever you have an open string, maybe um, try and play the melody a little bit on the D string. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that could be one option. Um, and uh, also messing around with the rhythm. Um, if, if, when you're making an arrangement, uh, you have the freedom, especially the the vocal line is very free and it's hardly ever um, dun, dun, da, da, da. Uh, we often have the main note not exactly on the beat. So this is a great advantage because you can, you can get your, me your melody note in. <laughs> Okay, so maybe try uh, try and give me. Uh, I the, I think here also the, the chords are beautiful, obviously. But the, the it's the bass line I think which yeah. which, which really works so well, yeah. So try try and um try and play me the melody and the bass line. Hmm. Remembering that it's fundamental that the bass line is in time, but with the melody you can be free. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah. <laughs> and this would be something like something like that, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, maybe for the E because it's um, uh, it's so nice the E major where we, we it's all minor and then suddenly there's this beautiful E major chord. So maybe that maybe you could start off with doing the, the separate melody and bass. So um, Where you could bring in um, maybe bring in the very first broken chord, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Or you uh, you could start off with the, you have your bass line and your melody, and then suddenly at that E chord you join them. So you do the chord and you join you 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 do your broken chord and you bring it up to the melody note. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I, I'm I'm trying as you are. Huh? 
slower than you were taking it and uh, really just focus on melody and bass lines so for the first for the first four bars don't worry about the the other notes of the chords okay mm -hmm. yeah melody or not. and then from whenever we hit the e major and f sharp seven you can try and um give me every note of those two chords so <laughs> e major but no stress huh? and then the f so what's going to be our seventh of the f sharp chord so be So then you can um be so it's maybe nice to bring that seventh also up high. So I do nice to bring the seventh, you know, when when if you were doing an arrangement and you're playing the the chords and the melody, you can feel free to improvise the melody slightly. So I would definitely when you have the, the F sharp seven, I would I would Add a little seventh to the melody. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you want to try? Yeah, I'll give it a go. I think that'd be great. Wait, wait. Okay. So now um, I'm. Uh, you're you're doing your super solo version of "While My Guitar Gently Weeps," and um, now I we'll, we'll just keep going with this chord sequence. And um, now I want maybe a camera variation. Yeah. To contrast with this. Uh, so what mm -hmm. would you do? Maybe something more lyrical, more flowing. Yeah. Let me think. <laughs> Lovely, lovely. Yeah. Um, so I can see you. You're, you're, you have these chords in your hand, shall we say? Uh, you know. So it's, it's good to, to associate our, our, our precious studies with, with these chords when we see them um, on paper uh, to accompany a melody. Okay. And now I would like something um, more minimalist and double stopping. Mm -hmm. So maybe something that I wouldn't necessarily. I don't want the melody, but I want to. I want the chords played in a. In a more minimalist, maybe mm -hmm. Philip Glass. Maybe. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
cool cool great okay and obviously all these um uh all these chord shapes we can um we could use two beatles songs alone to work on all our cello techniques so even you know uh, i could work on my fifths Yeah, 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 of course. Should I give it another go? I, I realized I didn't do any double stops. I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. Let's give it another go. So if it's, go for it. it's kind of this, yeah. Great, great. Okay, okay. So I think, um, yeah, you 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 have quite a good idea of your of your chords. So I would definitely recommend for your um, maybe alternative cello practice. Shall we call it like that? If you do, you yeah. still have your fake book, real book. Maybe like take um, take a take a jazz standard a, uh, a week uh, every every five days, and um, you know this obviously. Chord wise, it's not too difficult. But once you get into a jazz standard with more complex chords, you can you can really um, get your hand around all these these chord shapes and, and figure out where where you'd like to play them and, and how you'd like to play them. And I think it's also definitely good to maybe for the pizzicato as well get used to not only playing pizzicato with the standard uh, cello uh, index finger, no? Yeah. Um, for example, I, I often I find uh, often for. Um, just for because of speed reasons or because of wanting to maybe imitate a, a double bass yeah double especially yeah yeah so double double finger pizzicato it's it's also very interesting maybe to have a chat at some point with a with a jazz bass player and take on some of their pizzicato techniques um and uh yeah yeah, yeah. great great so um thank you very much i think we're, we'll take a very short five minute break now uh, and then we'll come back with the next masterclass. But thank you very much for your participation and uh, best of luck with your with your time in Ireland and your cello studies. Thank you, Naomi. You're welcome. Okay, bye, Isaac. So music for Galway, is that okay if we just take a, a, a short three to five minute break? Yeah, no problem. It's with it. Great. Okay. Great. Okay. A few minutes. Okay. Thanks.
Hello. Hi, Naomi. Um, Hi. So, next student for today is Pather, is it? Next student for today is Callum. Oh, sorry, perfect. Okay, so Callum up next. Great. Callum, Callum, Pather, and. Um... Callum, Pather, Zoe, and Adrian. Perfect, okay. So Callum, you're welcome to turn on your video and mic now. Was Callum there? Just one second. Callum, if you could turn on your video, that would be great. Or we can move on to Pader. Maybe we could change the order for now. Yeah, we can have Pader and then Callum afterwards would be great. Yeah. Thank you. Hello. Hi, Peter. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Nice to meet you. You too. So where where are you from? Where are you today? Um, I'm in the academy in Dublin. Oh, brilliant. Great. Uh, yeah. So who do you study with there? Uh, with Chris Marwood. Uh huh. Oh, brilliant. Um, and you've enjoyed a bit of the Chelsea Festival so far, have you? Yeah, it's been really, really good. Yeah, great, great, great. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you for your list of uh, five pieces that you like. Um, uh, beautiful and unusual uh, Bill Evans. Yeah. I chose, yeah, I didn't actually know this jazz song. Um, so yeah, are, are you a fan of Bill Evans or do you like this song in general? Do you know different other versions or tell me a bit about your choice? Yeah, well that's actually, in general, I'm a, and the levens, but when you sent it, um, what I didn't realize is it's by sort of somebody else because the tune is by someone else. So I looked into that, yeah. And um, it's by Victor Young. Um, that's the one, isn't it? I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, by Victor Young, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I looked into it as well. So it was basically made famous by a film which was of the same name, so I think it was uh written for, for the film. Yeah. Um, yeah, the song I think got more fame than the than the film, but uh, it's 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 nice that it, uh, it's nice to know that that was a way for for songs to get famous uh, back in the nineteen forty nine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> through films also. Yeah. So and um, yeah, what what do you like about this song? Well, uh, yeah, do you or is it more about eleven? Well, a, a bit of both, actually, I suppose. Um, like, I really like the Levens, but I like the... I picked this one because I do like the sort of maybe sort of slightly more melodic um, nature of it. Yeah. And um, I guess it kind of... I find it, it is um, calming when my life is very stressed most of the time. Um, Everything okay? Yeah, I just uh, got got uh, disconnected there for a minute. I think I'm back. Yeah, yeah. you're back. We're back on. We're back online. Yeah, okay. 
Uh, I can still see you very well. Yes, there you are. Great. Okay. Um, so yeah, the hey, Bill Evans has has a, a tendency to to give us calm in his way of with playing playing melodies. Um, and uh, have you ever played any 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 jazz melodies on the cello? No, actually, I've, I've never. Okay, okay. But I think it, it's nice to know that the a, a jazz melody can have the same beauty in the harmony and, and, and the creation as a, as a classical piece. Um, I remember when, when I was studying in the Glasgow in the conservatory, my, my cello teacher at the time, Robert Irving, he one day in my um, letterbox, the physical letterbox, where you should drop music or leave, leave things for you, he left me some Bill Evans scores and, he, and he, he knew I was interested in different styles of music and trying them out. So he said, why, why don't you try and... Uh, you know, ha have a go at these Bill Evans melodies. So I think it's, it's a, it was very nice at the time for me to have that input from from my classical cello teacher. I think that made me realize that, uh, you know, the other other styles had a value too. Yeah. Yeah. So um, have you got your score there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if if um, yeah. If just look, looking at it very simply, if someone asked you to to play this melody on, on the cello or, or to give a version of this song on the cello, what, what would be your first instinct or what would you do? Um, can you be, how do you mean as in like, uh, as, like if you were, I mean, I suppose you could. Yeah, if, 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 if um, yeah, if someone if, if if someone has asked you of a song you like and they say, okay, can you can you play me that song on the cello? Uh, so how would you play it? Would you play it uh, just the melody plain as I've written it? Would you play it high up an octave? Would you um, sing it and play? It? What what would you do? Um. Okay. I think the melody in itself is so so beautiful um, that you could even just start off with maybe a, a solo play, play playing the melody as it is. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, and then as, and yeah, so, so you'd have options, as you said, to play it up an octave. I suppose you could embellish it a bit. Um, exactly. Um, add harmony. Yeah, and as we're in we're in D here again, uh, because I've decided to arrange all the or play work on all the all the songs today where possible in D, just so we get a a, um, a clear idea of these chord shapes in our hands. Uh, having the open D string is to our benefit. Um, so the probably the whole first phrase I could I could uh, use the E A the D string together all the time. So. <laughs> And then my next chord is E minor, so I can do my fifth and I can get the bass note plus the melody. Yeah. And then we come to our uh, C sharp major seven. Um, so yeah, ha give, just uh, have, a, have a little go and then I'll give you some ideas as we go. Even if you just want to play straight the melody, that's fine too. For example, it's a um, the 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 chord underneath is D, but the C sharp is in the melody, and it sounds like a clash, but it's it's actually fine. So the the chord plus the melody gives us um, a chord which is called D major seven. Okay, so um, don't don't be afraid just to even just do as you did was was perfect there. So you for the you gave me um, the bass line. In the E minor, and it's fine to hold that E underneath for the C sharp chord. The C sharp, the C sharp chord would actually be major. So uh, we're looking at bar five. Maybe if you play the equivalent, the third of your C sharp major chord would be E sharp or an F natural. 
So C there bar five. Yeah. Yeah, if I was doing a double stop, I would probably play the E works. And obviously, you know, we, we can interpret chords as we like, but it might be nice to have the F natural yeah. underneath. That. Yeah, I think that really works actually. Yeah. So then, and then from bar six, do you want to go from bar six with your D and your C sharp in the melody and the D in the bass line? No problem. Yeah, I would stick the, I would just keep to the open D there, I think. Okay, great. Um, I'll just stop there. I think in bar seven. Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay? Yeah, I think in bar seven, it's uh, it works with the F sharp in underneath, and you have the. But it, uh, um, I don't get the impression that we've changed to B minor. It could, it could still be D there. Yeah. So it might be nice to go from bar six and do. Just in with broken chord that B. Um, yeah. because it's the first time the melody moved to the minor and it's, it's nice to emphasize that so um, and then you're fine for the following E minor it's the same kind of idea as bar six you have um, you can play the E on the D string for the bass note of the E minor chord seventh in the melody okay yeah so shall we say for that second line, you could probably alternate. So bar six could be uh, a double stop. Um, is sharp. Then bar seven could be a broken chord. So I get the B minor. Then the, the, the next bar, it's fine just with the bass note. Maybe then here, it's nice to uh, have the... So... Yeah, how, how would you like to do that A7? Um. Yeah. Something like that, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's also um, a, a sus4, and probably it's nice to stay free when, when we're trying to work out an arrangement of a melody and not think oh I, I i've done double stops now in the last four bars so i need to do another double stop we can do as we like there it's maybe nice to separate the melody and the accompaniment so we have so it's nice to bring out the sus4 in the a7 so you could do Yeah, so I, basically what I did there in, in, in bar nine, I um, I played the E and then the, the E is three beats. So I bring in the harmony. I, I imagine my E is continuing and uh, give the harmony then in beat two and beat three of the bar. So I, I do a A, sus so four and then an A. No need at all. So I just first position A, E, D. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So um, can you just try me that line, that second line from bar six to bar nine? B minor, B minor. Yeah. So B minor, um, B my B F sharp and D. Yeah, 
yeah, yeah, lovely, lovely. Um, so I think that that all that second line works works quite well. And when when obviously as you um as you try it out, you can see what's the best bowing and best uh, just to get the timing nicely. <laughs> And it's also um, it's nice probably to imag um, imagine you know sometimes when we're working on a, a Bach movement and we're told that there's clearly two voices answering each other, um, so we're trying to work on two two different um, timbres. So I think here also we can use the same technique and maybe have um, a, a stronger voice for the melody and then play in a in a in a more sotto voce voice for the accompaniment to keep very clear uh, for the listener what is the melody and what's the harmony yeah mm -hmm. okay great so far can we go from bar 10 and I think here we can use also your nice D open string as you did uh, below the melody for that bar and then we'll see where to go We need to, the, the beauty of this bar 11 is the A minor. The, we were getting chord five in the minor. So I, I, I would like to hear uh, a C somehow under this. So, so maybe you could do it. Just, just very subtly bring in under your so bar 11, we have our F sharp here. I, I, and I add in the A bass line. And I just want to play very briefly the, the C also to bring that major and then back to the D7. So when we when we go after that, that was great for the A minor seven. May, then make sure to let me hear a nice D, so we we get the D set, the, we get the D chord before the G. So. <laughs> So even just even even just the open G. Yeah. Yeah, or even the as you prefer. So can you go from bar ten? Okay, we'll stop here for a second. That's great. You added an E, which would be uh, the six. It would be like a G6, six, six, which works actually very nicely you, um, in that bar 12. That works lovely. Now, and then I spoke earlier about this standard shape for our minor seven flat and five chord. So put a two on C sharp, one on the G and a three on the E. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that that works perfectly. You get your bass note um, at the bottom of the chord, and your melody note, and you give the idea that it's you 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 give the idea that it's unusual chord because you managed to get the flat and five in as well. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Beautiful. Okay. And then here we, we can also. Give the whole F sharp major chord because it's um it's in a quite a moment of modulation here, so it's nice to give the whole F sharp chord just as we did in bar nine. Use the space where there's not a, a melody note changing to, to give the harmony. So I would do 
sorry. Yeah. So it's quite important to uh, for the for that chord flat and five to use that hand shape. I think it keeps easier. So second finger on the sharp. Um, and then and then and then stay where you are and you have the two on the f sharp so we can do an f sharp chord two two four just two two four yeah If you do only the F sharp, it's not clear if it's a D chord or a B minor chord. So yeah. when you can, it's nice to add in the. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, and continue on from the B minor, and then in the next chord, and we can right. keep. We'll go from just bar fourteen, and then I'd like you to give me the whole E chord and the melody note on top. How would you do that? Um, Great, but we're it's E, yes, E major. It's a bit unusual here. So yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Really nice. So that it it, it, it works like yeah. <laughs> the shapes that I, I really learned uh, just as uh, just as you know um, that's in your hands no one one three two is like uh, my automatic uh, hand shape for for a seventh chord and and, and obviously that sh that shape can be moved anywhere for, for any seventh chord so it's good to just have 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 the those main chords in your hands shall we say yeah and then how would you continue for the a7 and melody Uh, so you probably want the 7th. Yeah, I'd like the 7th, the bass note and the melody note. Great. Like this, you could hold the E and give me the third, and then just go down to this E7. And then, and then you can hold that because the G becomes the seventh of the A. Yeah. Okay, I think I have to move on to the next uh, piece of uh, unusual cello repertoire now. But um, thank you so much. Your, your choice, I think, given a bit of time and um, exploration and experimentation, I think it could work really nice as a as a piece, a standalone piece where you manage to play the melody and the chords. Yeah. And I think it could be really, and probably something nice to study after your slow movement uh, D major sixth suite where there's all those double stops, you know. Uh, um, you know, because you're working in the same key and there's some similar, you know, some similar chord ideas. Yeah. So, Thank you so much. I really appreciate yeah. that. You're welcome, Father. You're welcome. Okay. Best of luck. You too. Okay. Thanks so much, Father. And um, so we're going to have Callum next. He just had some laptop trouble, but it should be all right now. Okay. So, Callum, you can turn on your video. 
Hello, Callum. Hello, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, yeah, I'm playing. Yeah, where, where are you today? You in Ireland? In Cork, or? Yeah. In Cork, great, okay, okay. Um, so your, your chosen piece, so we're gonna uh, return to the Beatles. I didn't actually do your score. I'm sorry, because oh, yeah. I thought it'd be nice to work, um, uh, just to work without a score for one of the pieces. Um, and uh, it, I'd actually, I'd actually have done an arrangement already of this this uh, blackbird. So I'm just oh, gonna, right. gonna, gonna kind of, uh, yeah, work, work through it and explain. And um, just a little in, interesting piece of information. I don't know if you, I presume you like the Beatles original just as much as you like the version you sent me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, this, um. You, what, what your version was by? Can you remind me the name? Uh, Hiromi. Hiromi. Hiromi, yeah. I had never come across her before, and you weren't the only cellist to have mentioned um, her. So it's it's interesting to see that, uh, yeah, just what what you guys listen to, and and a lovely a lovely arrangement of hers also. Um, so you know, the, when the Beatles wrote this song, it was inspired by uh, a piece of Bach. Did you know that? Oh, I can't hear you. Sorry. Okay. So, you're okay. So when, when the Beatles were in their early stages, um, they, they had a, a little party piece that they used to play at the end of the night, which was a, Bach, a, little, a little Bach melody on the, on the guitar. And they really liked it. And they liked just some of the chord shapes and the, the sounds. And, and so they used this as inspiration for writing Blackbird. The guitar, the guitar part of Blackbird. Um, so, in a way, it can be thought of as a. It's almost like a for the cello. It's almost like a technical study of a six. And and the, the accompaniment alone um, is is yeah is something nice to work on. So, we'll imagine they they, they they play it in G. I think you know we play it in G as well. But we'll just uh, work on it in C if that's okay. Okay, and we we'll work pizzicato. Okay, so you can put your door down. So, we're all, all, almost all the chords are six shapes, and we're gonna, uh, oh no, sorry, six, uh, yeah, it's a third, but it's over an octave apart. So, I have my tonic here, and the third up on the D string. So, the first, the very first uh, chordal sequence would be. Sorry. So I'd like you to do that for me. So you have C, then D, the F natural, and then E with the G natural. Yeah. And then you're going up with the up to your C harmonic. And your E with the I, I do the C with the third finger and the E with the fourth. No, so, so um, so, sorry, I said the wrong fingering. Second finger on your C, harmonic. And third finger on the E, skipping a string, yeah. Ah, okay. Okay. And the pizzicato, however, however you find yourself comfortable, but yeah, thumb on the C string and then another finger. Um, of your choice for the for the D string, okay. So, and if if you if you can find your uh, comfortable way to have a finger to play the open G always, that works quite nicely, and it makes it very similar to the guitar arrangement. So it would be. Okay. Yeah. I'll try. <laughs> And yeah, so sometimes the notes don't actually, the, the, the G string doesn't actually ring out or maybe it, like, for example, yeah. But it, it just adds a little bit of movement and makes it sound similar to the guitar arrangement, so. Oh, sorry. Okay. And the rhythm. And once you're up on that C chord up here, the rhythm is. Sorry. <laughs> okay, 
So I'm just working with, I'm not, now I'm not working with the G, just the C string and the D string. Sorry. I'm gonna move my screen. Ah, okay. Yeah, so basically with the with the thumb I'm doing four and then yeah 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 okay and then uh goes down to chord four which is F so back down here okay then I have F sharp and a C, so quite an extension here. So C, fourth position, fourth finger. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah. And here F sharp. No, so it should, should sound like a clash we have. So we have F and A, and then I have F sharp and C. Your F sharp to be a little bit higher, yeah? Yeah. And then I have G and B. And then I have the same kind of extension as before. I have G sharp and D. Okay. And then I have A and C. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just go through that little sequence again from the F. It's basically moving from F to G to A minor. Okay. But there's then the, those little passing chords where I have to do the extension. So I have F, F and A. We'll just do the simple chords now. G, G and B. And then A and C. Okay. And with the passing notes, it's... Okay, I'll <laughs> try. Um. Great, okay. So we can do these separately as we've done. Or we can do them as chords. <laughs> uh. Yeah, and then once we get to the A minor, we're back to that rhythm again. So it's A minor, and then the A goes down to an A flat. Uh -huh. Okay, so we'll try from the beginning to there. Okay, yeah, <laughs> I can try this. Okay, uh, no, no, no. I know it's 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 an extra challenge working uh, working by ear, but I, I I I thought I thought it was good to just uh, yeah, not, I need always it. Work, yeah. Not, not always work from a sheet, you know. And of, often people who are using learning different styles of music, they don't always have the sheet in front of them. And, and uh, yeah. Okay, so I'll just I'll run through it slowly once, and then you can do it. Okay. So we have the sixth. We have C. Then D and F, then E and G. The fingering as you prefer. Eh? I move up one, I keep always the, the bass note with the one, one here. And I go up to the C, the C harmonic and E up here. And go down F, I have this little run F, then the extended position F sharp and C. And G and B, G sharp and D, and then A minor, going down to the A flat. Okay. okay um. Sorry. Okay. Oh no.
Yeah. Okay. Good. So then we're back to our six. We have a G, the G sixth, and then the extended position going back. So F sharp and C. And then I'm back to my F. Okay. So I have um, after our A minor, we go from the A minor, A minor, down to the A flat, and then we have G extended, and then F. Okay, exactly. And then the F goes to minor. We have F, F minor. So you just ch change from three to two, no? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we just basically go down in semitones. Um, we have, so we have E and G, E flat, and G flat. Oh okay. And then we're at we're we're almost at the end. We have five one. We have G seven and C. Okay, and the G seven I just go use open G and then F natural here. So you have G. So that would be. And then the last chord, you have your open C and your E. Ah, okay. Exactly, okay. So we just go from the A minor again. G extension, F, F minor. And then we just have the semitone, semitones down. We have the E and G. Flat, G flat, and then chord five, seven, and then one. Okay. Um, yeah. So. Okay. Okay. And one last thing. Um, for the for the chroma, two chromatic like chords before the five one cadence, I add in the A, A string as well. with the chromatic for now okay so we have g uh, e and g e flat and g flat and then the five seven okay all i was doing was adding as as in the guitar arrangement there's often a lot of uh, the open strings that work the a the a just works for those over those chords so i was just adding in the a um to in which, in which the chords shall we say so um yeah just just I thought it would be interesting to pick this because in a way it's a, it's working out a, a, a nice accompaniment, but it's also, we're working on our six, we're working on the extensions and the tuning. Some of the tunings are quite difficult. And secondly, uh, as, the, as the piece moves on, there's the, the second part, which, which there's more complicated chords. Um, but yeah, I think your, your choice is, is, a, is a beautiful song and, and a great piece that can be, can be used in many technical ways. So yeah. Thanks for your thanks for your choice. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, if if you want, I can I can send you on a score so you can remember what we've what we've worked on there. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm very impressed with your your quick memory there. So that was great. I'm I'm very glad we managed to work on that. Way. So thank, <laughs> thank you. That's great. Okay, thanks. Callum, I'll, I'll I'll move on now. Bye. Perfect. Thanks, Callum. So I think we have Zoe up next. 
And as well, just a note on timekeeping, it's 10 to 12 now, so we might just go a tiny bit over. Oh, is it okay to go a tiny bit over? Is that okay? Yes, yeah, it should be okay. Okay, great, thanks very much. Zoe, hello. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So where, where are you where are you zooming from today or where are you? I'm from Munich in Germany. I'm oh, in wow. Yeah. But you're, so you're studying there right now, are you? Yeah. But you're originally from? Where in Ireland? From Cork. Oh, great, great uh, Cork representation today. <laughs> Brilliant. And um, yeah, lovely to see your, um, your choice of songs and um, your, your I yeah I the gloaming I, I you're not the only one to have mentioned the gloaming and I their it they, their arrangements are just really beautiful aren't they? Yeah, they're absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna look through your other song, your other songs. Ah, uh, yes, it was you who mentioned the boots of Spanish leather. Yeah. Also. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, uh, just speaking about, uh, yeah, I'll, we'll speak about that afterwards, but we'll do the, the bully house first. So have you, do you play some traditional music also? Or um, did you go? To be honest, I kind of like messed around uh, like a little bit sometimes, but um, I've never really uh, played it properly or, um, uh -huh. which is a shame, but, yeah. but I listen to it constantly. Really? Okay. Okay, well, yeah. the, the melody you've chosen is a very, very simple but very beautiful Irish melody, and uh, the version is very minimalist harmonically, but but really works well. Um, and um, yeah, I just did a little research about the slip jig. Do you know anything about a slip jig as opposed to a normal jig? Or I yeah, my knowledge is pretty basic to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. Well, just interesting to know that um, it was um. Yeah, as apart from being one of the main Irish dances and having come the jig probably coming from different countries and then becoming an, an Irish folk tune, then as a dance for decades, it was only danced by men and then later on only danced by women. But now it's a dance that both women and men can dance. So I thought that was quite funny, but it's described as very graceful and controlled. And I think that compared to a normal jig, the, the slip jigs are usually played maybe at slightly a slower pace. So they can be seen as maybe a, you know slightly more more graceful than a than a jig a jig that you would hear for for the a standard uh, six eight jig no so would you like to just play me a little bit of it how you would how you'd play just the melody yeah and then we'll work with it yeah. <laughs> It's kind of ABA format. This um, this tune, know, the first part comes back, and it's so nice to hear it with um, the simple chord. They often then return to the D chord. We're in D here again, but often they use a, a different inversion of the chord, which is such a simple thing, but it just works so well. So they often have the F sharp in the bass. So um, if your uh, fellow German cellist in, in Munich was playing this melody and you wanted to accompany and, and give a kind of an Irish atmosphere. Um, uh, folk music atmosphere and just uh, play these chords maybe not broken chords but just as solid chords like that would you how can you give me a little uh, trial of what you might do Okay, okay. And then, um, lovely to hear you singing along, singing along uh, sotto voce there also, yeah. It's, it's, it's quite a nice range, not too high, so yeah, it works fine. Um, and then for the, for the other chords, so we have, uh, they often have this D with the F sharp, so how, how would you do that? <laughs> 
with the bait to keep the bass line. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, don't don't be afraid to even just use your open strings or have even some double double the same notes because it just enriches. So for example, the normal D shape was fine. But then if I want the F inversion, I put the F sharp in the bass, and then I can even use these open strings A and D and even double the D fine here. And I can play it like a guitar. And yeah, so I have F sharp D D A. Yeah. Um and a very nice shape that I like to use for, for the G chord, apart from this, so, um, which works quite well, is sometimes to put the B here, and then we have the A, which would be kind of a, a sixth in the chord, but it works quite nicely. Yeah, so, yeah, you, have, so you have the open A, you have the open G, and you have the B on the D string, so. Yeah. Um, like uh, often these um, melodies are accompanied maybe by a dag dad tuning, this uh, way of open tuning the guitar. And often you'll have resonant notes, um, which not, might not exactly be in the chord, but it doesn't matter. And they give that, um, they give that kind of atmosphere, uh, harmonic atmosphere that we, are, we often hear. So I think, uh, sorry. It works just as nice as, you know, just for a little alternation as well. And then our F sharp. And then the other chord in the accompaniment we have is E minor and then B minor, so. Um. But yeah, maybe an inversion would be nice, eh? Yeah, um, it might be nice to have a D in it. So what you could do, you could either, um, you could do, yeah, E, B, G, and then get the D as well, however you're comfortable. I often, yeah. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. And then, the B minor, often these chords work nicely as well. Um, for example, the B minor, instead of playing B, F sharp, and D, um, I have used the major seventh, so just do one, one, one. Yeah, and maybe bring in, the, bring in the minor third, just have the second as a passing note. So with that knowledge, do you want to just try and play me the chords? Play me, play me through the chords. Uh, yeah, sure. With as you prefer. Yeah, if, if yeah, as you prefer. If you would like to try something with the bow or pizzicato. Um. Oh yes, so you have F sharp and you, you're, so you have F sharp, D, D, and then. second half um, you could just start there with your D chord up high yeah or even just even just use the open D as, as you prefer
had some really nice inversions now that I'm kind of uh, I've forgotten. So we have the um, yeah, just go from the second part again, and we maybe do quarter at a time. Whenever you're not sure, we'll stop. So from bar nine. <laughs> You could maybe um, you could get in the holy minor chord there. music don't be afraid to um change as much as you like the melody or add in um, like um, um. you know like um change change it to make it as as rich as you can uh, and even the second part maybe like i would definitely practice all the second part open thumb position just to see the possibilities there also But um, you know, like uh, then we can also maybe use some some drones, you know, and even yeah. Just I'll try try also like when you're studying at home, try maybe a whole section of the second half in some position and see what chords you can manage to work out there as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, imagine that someone's giving you the task of making an Irish melody sound like a uh, Proper study or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah. Lo lo lovely choice, and um, it might also be interesting to to record. You know, you you can do a great job playing chords and melody, but uh, there would be a whole new set of possibilities if you recorded on a device the mm -hmm. melody and then tried to experiment. Also, um, if we're in D, there's also so many harmonics that would work. You could even do a whole all accompaniment with your all the harmonics you have all the harmonics for the d chord all the harmonics for the g yeah they're all there and and then you can also combine them with double stops with the harmonics so it could be like a, a little um yeah a, a little experiment yes. but, yeah. okay. lovely choice thank you very much and uh i'll move on now um but yeah, stay around also to all your other cellists. If there's time at the end, we're going to do a, a, a very little uh, a little project of learning by ear uh, all together. Oh, brilliant. Thanks so much. That'd okay. Be great. Thanks. Best of luck. That's great. Thanks so much, Zoe. So now, Adrian, if you want to unmute yourself and turn on your camera. Hello. Hello, Adrian. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So you're, remind me where you're from, Adrian. Uh, Croatia. Croatia, brilliant, brilliant. But you're based in Ireland at the moment. Yeah, I'm studying Great. here at the University of Limerick. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Super, super. With Aoife, is it? Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, say a big hello from me. Uh, yeah, so yeah, beautiful choice of, of music um, from you. And you're, you, you sent me a piece of Lebanese music. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I, I really, uh, not, not, I don't know so much about this music, but uh, really, really it like it. Uh, you, do, do, you, do you know much about this music? No, actually, I just found it by accident on, on Spotify and I like the yeah. tune, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
after after hearing it and uh, and um, yeah, doing a little bit of research, I I found that something very interesting that in um, the National Conservatory in the Lebanon they have um, two orchestras which are both of equal importance. So they have the Lebanese National Symphony Orchestra and the Lebanese National Orchestra for Oriental Arabic Music. Mm. Um, and uh, the singer who, who sings this song, which we're going to work on, which she sent me, she's she's actually, the, um, I'll send later some YouTube links, and I found uh, her singing with the Oriental Arabic Orchestra. Um, and beautiful to see how the, the approach to their playing is is, is different to, to the, the classical approach. And the, at the very beginning, there's a the lead violinist of the orchestra does a, an improvised solo, and the audience, you can hear them screaming and clapping and shouting in the in the middle of the piece when she finished their solo, and I think this is a it, it's it's so nice. Just give us a little taste of the the different ways to appreciate music and to perform music, and we should always be very aware and curious about these things. And so, thank thank you so much for introducing me to this um, this uh, music and this genre. Uh, do you want to do you want to play the melody for us? Yeah, we can. Sure. Sure. Yeah, can you just play it through. So already in itself, it's, it's a beautiful, haunting melody, quite a, quite a nostalgic in a way, I think, no? Yeah. So um, if you were going to maybe um, accompany this or play this as a, as a version where you hear the melody and the harmony, where, where would you start? Or what, would you, what do you think would um, kind of give the idea of the, of the rhythm or the, the way this music is accompanied? Well, maybe I'd start with the bass, like... Yeah. Uh, Maybe like to keep this kind of rhythm of like. Yeah. Like for instance. Okay. To start so with. yeah, I think definitely for the first time through we could have a rhythm like this. And if I was sticking to this rhythm, I would maybe just do the full chords. I would do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we have our full D minor, D, A, F, D. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or yeah, e either or. You can use the open strings as well as you prefer. Switch between the two. And then for the A7, make sure you get the seven in the chord. Well, I could either do like this, with open um, string. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's... Uh, it doesn't always work unless it's stated in the chord that the the seventh is in the base of the chord. Yeah. It's better to have it higher up. So I would keep the A in the base, and I would do the seventh here. So I would do. I would do. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. So that's our D minor and A seven, and then the G minor. Uh, G minor, well, either here mm -hmm. or. Maybe this is a bit richer. Or even even playing the G on the C string, so I have the G, G, B flat, and G. Yeah. Um, and now. And <laughs> yeah. But... Yeah, yeah. Now, you can even if if you're up there with the G minor, you can even just go on up. No. And use the harmonic it might be quite nice. So you have A, mm -hmm. E, C sharp, and harmonic. So yeah, one one. I would do one one three, and then four on the harmonic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. So maybe yeah, one ver one version of accompaniment could have these uh, guitar-like chords. Um, 
but then I think it would be definitely nice to to give an idea of the kind of uh, the, the more faster rhythms and I think it might be nice to do an alternation between the bass note and the fifth so we could do something like this yeah so work every chord where I'm alternating for the base of the chord between the first and the fifth, and then the, the higher part of the chord stays the same. So I have. Can you try that for me? Great, yeah. And obviously, as you're most, co uh, you work then to see what's the most comfortable way for you. If I'm separating the chordal accompaniment and I have something doing the a clear bass line and then uh, a middle part with the rest of the chord I would maybe try and do the bass line all with the thumb and then the other chords so I'm yeah huh? okay and then for the a7 how would you do that to, to have the fifth in the bass <laughs> Maybe it would work better to, to use the a, you know the A chord we found up here. Or, or another thing you could do, you could take the fifth down, so you could do oh. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit tricky with Yeah, it's a bit uh, it's a bit yeah. yeah. Or, 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 or I could also, um, to alternate the bass line, instead of using the first and the fifth, I could use the seventh, maybe. Maybe it doesn't work as well, but anyway, yeah. I think for me, the best option here is up here. Yeah. Um, okay, and G minor. Mm -hmm. So then, yeah, maybe like keep it here. So. Uh... Perfect, yeah. Great. Okay. 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 So I think that's all. All our chords. No, E seven. Yeah, that one. <laughs> so not for this. E. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah, okay. And um, when we're using the cello in this way, maybe to play styles of music which are slightly different to what we're used to, technical elements come into play that we don't usually consider. So it's it's very important to make the bass line come out, um, speak out. So I must keep the my fingers down and, and try and find a way to do the pizzicato as resonant as possible. So bringing my hand down as low as I can and keeping keeping the chord in position a big difference as opposed to um yeah, <laughs> yeah. okay um yeah it's very nice um and if and we just try it close now but if you were trying to do a version where you were playing the melody and the chords at the same time would that work with this piece do you think uh, well for trying <laughs> she didn't think about that uh, uh -huh. well i don't know <laughs> But maybe on the first the beats only like to do a short arpeggio like Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't think it should be interrupted between the beats or <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Maybe you could do something moving up very quickly. Or, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, this one, is, I think to get the character across, it's nice maybe to, to have it uh, either with maybe a looper or a device where you can play the bass line in an interesting way by itself. And then you add the melody on top or else in as a duo, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I agree. But yeah, it's, it's definitely a piece that sits really well on the cello. Um, 
and uh, yeah, nice, nice choice. And maybe you could also uh, experiment like um, play it in different keys. Then also moving key, you see there's maybe other possibilities for the chords that might work better or things like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. For sure. Great. Okay. Okay. Thank um, you very much. Thank, thanks very much. Uh, I, I just close now with uh, everyone and we'll do a very little quick um, I Got Rhythm by ear. Um, I think we just have a couple Good. of minutes. Yes, yeah, so that should be okay. If you're happy to continue, Naomi, of course. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's fine. Great. Okay. So will I bring everyone's cameras on then? Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Hello again, everyone. Hi. Thanks very much for uh, listening in and uh, working. I just wanted to finish with a very little um, sample of the beginning of I Got Rhythm. As it's very important to have uh, rhythm uh, in whatever we play. And uh, I thought it would be a nice experiment. I, I'll, I'll do it now and then you guys can try it at home, okay? So um, what I would do is I would put my metronome um, and uh, well, I'll imagine it now so you don't have your metronome beeping away. But um, if you're trying this, put the metronome on and imagine it that it's, it's uh, beating on beat two and beat four, okay? And so it, my objective is to, to work on the rhythm and to have the chords and the melody of I got rhythm, okay? Um, so the phrase, the phrase in D major is a B B E B D B E B B D E G F F D B D. Okay. Um. I have my offbeat. One, two, three, four. Oh no! Yeah, one, two, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. So, and I would play. So, um, yeah, I'll give you both the bass line and the melody now. So. Okay, and I'd like you to try, I'd like you all to try that one at a time, okay? So, where the melody is um, not so much on the beat, and it's just those notes, but very importantly, I always have the 5 1 in the bass, so. workshop and uh, try it out by ourselves okay so the, the the melody is as as i've explained um quite simple and um you can you can find it uh quite easily looking it up online um and learn it by ear and then the bass line is very simple also F sharp G A F sharp F natural E A D F sharp G G sharp A A D. Okay, um, I'll just run through this, run through this, and then you can you can try it out by yourselves. Um, so, uh, and the chords. If I wanted to do a chordal accompaniment, I would do D, then D with the F sharp, G A. D with the F sharp, the diminished chord we spoke about, which the fingering position is one, three, two, then E minor, A7, D, D first invert with the F sharp in the bass, G, this funny chord we spoke about before, flat and fifth, and then D with the A in the bass, and A7. OK, 
okay? So I think probably the easiest thing um, to do here is that um, I, I will send you all a, a, a chord sheet for this song and uh, you can try to work your arrangement so that you can have the melody as offbeat as possible so that you manage to get your chords in as well on the beat. So yeah, I think I think we'll we'll close it at that because with the with the sound it's quite hard for us to to try this um, live because I don't have everyone's microphones and the sound is really good. yeah anyway, but um, just thank you all so much for um, taking part in this workshop and uh, best of luck with your cello studies as you continue wherever you are and I really hope that we manage to meet in person someday somehow okay. Thank you so much, Naomi. That was fantastic. Very enjoyable. So we'll end the live stream at that. Thanks. Okay. Thank